إنما مثل أهل بيت فيكم كسفينة نوح من ركبها نجا ومن تخلف عنها غرق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إنه خير ناصر ومعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم وهو أصدق القائلين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم تأتي لا تكلم نفس إلا بإذن فمنهم شقي وسعيد آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته First of all I thank Almighty God for giving me this moment and this opportunity to be here and to share a word or two out of what we have learned from Ahlul Bayt alayhim salatu was salam with you brothers and sisters. The verse I've just quoted from glorious Quran it's verse from Quran 11, 105. And departing from this verse, I want to discuss the topic of achieving success as youth. How do I achieve success in the eye of Almighty Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our examination will be of the following stages. The first stage will look at the definition or the meaning of success. What is success? And second stage will look at divisions of success, meaning the real success and the fake success. And then the last stage of the examination will look at what do I do practically as youth especially to achieve maximum success in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you go to look at the verse, the verse is talking about qiyama yawma ta'ati la takallamu nafsun illa bi'ithni. That a day will come when no one will be allowed to utter a word unless through the decree of Allah. Then the verse said, of those who will gather on that day, there are groups of su'ada, those who are successful, and there will be groups of those who are unsuccessful. So therefore, I take inspiration from the last part of the verse to look at the importance of achieving success as youth. Because if you look at life, life is nothing but about achieving success. Either success in this dunya or success in akhirah. And if you go to look at the way Almighty Allah created us, Allah provided us with fitra, which we all know, primordial nature. And the work of fitra is to drive us towards success or towards perfection. But then in addition to this fitra given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah provided us with aql, with desire, with imagination, you name that. And if a person is able to make good use of the apple, the desire, the imagination, then you achieve the success which is required by Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. And failing to do so, then one cannot be regarded as successful by Allah. And as a believer, and as a youth, yes, I want to be successful, but you want your success to be sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if your success is sanctioned by Allah, then definitely you regard yourself not only successful in this dunya, but successful on the day of Qiyamah. And before we dwell more into this discussion, let me share this beautiful and known tradition of our beloved first Imam, Imam Amir al muminin alayhi salam, on the importance of the usage of our akal or intellect to become successful in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you as a youth, there is only one thing that is required from you. is to make good use of the timing given to you by Allah as youth to achieve success in dunya and akhirah. Where Mawal Amir al muminin mentioned, when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala created animals, provided them desire, some narration says desire, imagination without intellect. But when he created angels, provided them with the intellect without desire and imagination. But when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala created insan, human being, he provided you with the intellect, with the desire, and with the imagination. Then Amir al muminin says, whoever ensures that his intellect manages the imagination and the desire, you will become better than angel in the eye of Allah. But if you allow the desire to manage the intellect and imagination, then you become worse than an animal in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now question, what is a success? Here I want, inshallah, brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. This person is successful. That person is successful. Now the question is, what is a success? Because there is no one who doesn't want to achieve success. You go to school, your aim is to achieve success. You go to work, your aim is to be perfect. No, the prayers we've just done, Ibadah, what's the aim of Ibadah? Is to achieve success. I mean, the common sense tells me, whatever I do, if at the end of it there is no success in it, then it's a waste of time. So now question, what is a success? Because you realize that sometimes a person is not successful, then he regards himself as a successful person. And sometimes you find a person is indeed successful, but then he tends to undermine him or herself and thinking that he's not a successful person. And I've chosen this topic to address it with you because as youth, I mentioned it on my first night of lecture at Imam Hassan Center. There is a definition of who is youth. This just I mentioned this in person so that we understand what I'm trying to address here tonight. A youth is someone who's got the power to be productive and to be creative. In whatever you do, be it duniawi or ukhrawi, because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala placed in you as youth the power to achieve whatever you want to achieve. What you want to be in future is informed by the way you handle your youthness. If you make good use of being a youth, believe me or not, brothers and sisters, you will achieve maximum success when you grow old. But if you fail to capitalize on being a youth, and here you find most of us Muslims, we achieve great success when it comes to dunya. But when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are failing to achieve that success. And so addressing the question of success tonight, I will be going towards more of how to establish that relationship with Allah wa azza wa jal. And if you go to examine the success of religion, be it Islam 
Christianity, Judaism, you name it. The success of each and every religion is through the youth of that religion. When you take things in their hand positively, and they work very hard, and they become determined, they achieve a maximum success. So now what is a success? Success, brothers and sisters, as scholars mentioned, is a psychological condition opposed to actual condition. Now, every single human being in your life, from one time to another, you are examined by these two conditions. Psychological condition and actual condition. Now, what is a psychological condition and what is actual condition? Understanding this will make us understand what success is all about. A psychological condition is a condition. When a person is examined what he has to pause, pay attention to realize that he is examined with it. Example, happiness and sadness. Example, success and failure. Sometimes you may be successful, but you do not know that you are successful. You keep complaining. Sometimes you are indeed a failure. But you think that you are holier than thou and you are the most successful person. Because success and failure are psychological condition. It is a condition that I have to examine my life. I have to examine myself and realize, look, what are my stance now? No, I think I'm successful. No, no, I think I'm not doing well. I think at school I'm not doing well. I think at mosque I'm not doing well. I think in my salah I'm not doing well. I think in my job I'm not doing well. You need to pay attention to what makes a person successful and what renders a person a failure. But the opposite of it is actual condition, which ulama mentioned sifat waqiyah. What is actual condition? It's a condition when one is examined with it. Whether you pay attention to it or not pay attention to it, you are examined. Example, health and sickness. If a person is healthy, he's healthy. If a person is sick, he's sick. And scholars come forward and said, Sa'ada ibara al-lazzatin akliya. Success is nothing but intellectual enjoyment. What is intellectual enjoyment? It's something that you work for. Something that you strive for. Something that you determine to achieve. In other words, success in Islam doesn't just come cheap. It comes through hard work. It comes through a lot of exploration. It comes through a lot of determination. If you truly want to be successful in whatever you do in life, especially in our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't have to be determined in my life. I have to work very hard. And that is why you find in the history of Islam, most of those who have achieved success next to the Holy Prophet, they were youth. To begin with, our own beloved Prophet, he was youth when he became a Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the age of 25, Rasulullah was youth. When he became a prophet of Allah, age of 40, youth. The same way our Imam, Imam Ali, you've got a very known tradition, La Fata Illa Ali. Fata meaning youth. Amir al Mu'minin did not just become a successful youth without hard work. That is why today you go to any mosques, Shia mosque, Sunni mosque, go anywhere. You find youth have a lot of challenges, youth have a lot of complaints. This does. What I tell you is that, look, take your inspiration from Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Take your inspiration from this riwayah. La fata illa ali. Fata mean youth. Same word in Quran used when it comes to Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave. Inna hum fitiyatun amanu bi rabbihim wasit wa humul. Was it now? They were youth who believe in their Lord and Allah increased them in guidance. Meaning youth. Now question. What are the divisions of success? There are two forms of success. Fake success and real success. 
And you as a Muslim, as a believer, you have to aim for real success. Although the fake success is prerequisite to achieving the real success. Without the fake success, you will not achieve any success. Now to understand it better, I take you to sociology. There is a discussion in sociology on the question of love for life. That there is no insan or human being who does not love life. Everybody loves life. Who wants to die? Who doesn't want money? Who doesn't want to look nice? Because you know, the strongest instincts given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the instinct of love for life or love for oneself. Everybody loves himself. Even an infant loves himself. You close your, you, you, you place your hand next to the eyes of an infant, he or she defends himself. But you know, our love for life, the way we express it are not the same. Children, they've got a unique way of expressing their love for life. Elders, and I'm going to use a verse of Quran to demonstrate that. Elders, fathers, mothers, depending on your age group, we have a different way of expressing our love for life. Youth, we have a different way of expressing our love for life. But the bottom line is, we all love life. Now, when you go to Quran, Surah Al-Hadid, verse 20. Inshallah, when you have time, you go back home, you can double check this ayah. It's a very amazing ayah. It describes how we express our love for life. And this ayah, personally, it fascinates me. But at the end of it all, you realize how Allah, in another verse of Quran, will tell you, all that are outlined in this chapter hadith are just prerequisite to the real success. It's not the success. Now let us look at the ayah. Number one. Allah comes and said, إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ لَعِبٌ He said, indeed, the life of this dunya is a play. Just take note of that. We'll discuss it. Who express his love for life by playing? Number two, Allah said, وَلَحْوٌ Amusement. Then he said, وَزِينَةٌ is beauty. وَتَفَاقُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ is mutual rivalry. And then Adel said, وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ An abundance of wealth and children. Now Allah mentioned these five things. How we express our love for life. First expression is play. Play is not everyone that shows his or her love for life by playing. Here, according to Mufassirin, these are children from age 0 to 7, 8. They express their love for life by playing. And those of you who are young parents, you know your children. A child playing somewhere, you try to stop the child, you fix it. By the time you get there, the child plays. They go to school, they play. No wonder Islam says they are first seven, you allow them to play. Because they express their love for life by playing. And understand, all of us, we love life. But we don't express it equally. And if you understand the way your group age express their love for life, according to this ayah of Quran, then it will help you to achieve the real success in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah said, Lahwa. Amusement. What is lahu? Lahu means to consider what is secondary, primary, and what is primary? Secondary, these are teenagers. Teenagers, those of you, if you have studied psychology, you'll understand what I'm talking about easily. Teenagers, they express their love for life. What is secondary, primary? Father will tell, no, no, this is not, no, 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 this is what I want, Father. You try to explain the girl, they will not understand. And the father, if he does not understand, he has sleepless night. <laughs> but every teenager, to tell you the truth, 
That is how they express their love for life. That is why Allah said lahwa. Otherwise, elderly person, why must you, if you see elderly person still in lahu, then it's a problem. <laughs> that is why you have a riwaya which says when a person reaches 40 and still the person is not serious, but the shaitan is ransom for his mom and father. <laughs> the third one was in a ton beauty. Beauty from teenager, meaning 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, up to go, uh, up to up, they show their love for life by beauty, label clothes. If you see somebody above there, I'm telling you, everything particular about label, he's just doing, that is not his stage. From 20 upward, up until close to 40, not 40, they express their love for life by beauty youth. Look at the watches they wear. Even if he has to starve him or herself, he'll go and buy that now. <laughs> it's happening. That's how we express ourselves for life, including the speaker. And then the next one, Tafahurum Baina Mutual Rivalry. He has scholars and mutual rivalry also the same thing around that. 35 to 40, they also the same way. So youth, yours is what? Beauty and mutual rivalry. Sometimes it's not because of the beauty. I want to show my peers that I've got the best. I want to show my classmates at school or at university I am having the best clothes. And today you find people, they argue, I bought my clothes from this shop. That one said, I buy from that shop. That one said, I buy from that. They're just debating about the shop where they bought it. This is how they express their love for life. But now when a person reaches 40, look at this and listen to this very carefully. That is why it is important you make good use of your time before you reach 40. Because Rasulullah said, Al-Arba'in sinnul hikmah 40 is the age of wisdom. Meaning, after 40, everything is touch riba, it's experience. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve, wallahi, when you are youth up until 40. Anything after 40 is that experience only which is going to help you. After 40, our fathers, our mothers, who are after 40, you know how they express their love for life? By showing their children and the wealth they make. When they come most, their son recite Dua Kumail, they tell their prayers. Ah, you see, this is my son. This is my son. When he go out, he see how many property he has. He say, this, this, this. He may not need the money, but he's happy. He's success. After 40, that is how they express their love for life. I have more children or no, my children are more successful. This one PhD, that one bachelor's degree, this is our father, this is how they express it. Because after this, what do they want? Hence you find those Quraysh, they would argue and argue and argue until Allah mentioned, they would argue, no, 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 our family is this man who is buried there is from my family. This one who is buried there from my family. This one is buried there. Look at what we have. And they would visit even cemetery and showing that this is the grave of our family member. Today it is happening in some of our communities, by the way. When you go to the cemetery, people instead of focusing, they tell you, no, this is the grave of this. He started this. He started that. He started that. Elders after 40, this is how they express their love for life. So all these ways of expression, they are success, but fake success. And the last one especially is the wealth and the children. Islam says it's prerequisite to the main success, but that's not the real success. And Allah in numerous verses of Quran highlighted that this is a success. You need it and you have to strive for it. But that's not the main success. Hence, you find Surah Al-Imran, Zuyina lil-nasi hubbu shahwati min al-nisa. 
والبنين والك إلى آخر الآية ألا ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا. Should we make it beautiful for people? The treasures of this world, and Allah mentioned so many things. At the end, Allah said, "These are just mata ul hayat al dunya. This is just entertainment and enjoyment of this world. But what is the real success? It is with Allah. Real success is what Allah mentioned. Falanu hiyana hu hayat al tayyiba. We will indeed grant them good living. What is good living? This is where I want to draw your attention. What is good living? Whatever you do in life, your education, your business, your achievement in this dunya, understand you are just a caretaker. It is prerequisite to the real success. Real success is for your money, for your wealth, for your knowledge, for your fame, for your beauty to connect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If whatever I have as youth in this world cannot connect me to Allah, then there's a problem. And today, the challenge that our youth face, wallahi, if you dissect and examine all those challenges, on top of the challenge is our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love Imam Hussein? Say this, I love Imam Hussein. To what extent do you love Imam Hussein? He said, no, Imam Hussein died for Islam. Oh. Now, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, Sayyidi Shabab, Ali Jannah, Imam Hussein's connection with Allah is unbelievable. Why can't you tell the lie? No, 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 Sheikh, I've got a lot of work. So many things around me. You go to school, temptation. I said, through temptations, you reach perfection. Yeah. Allah placed in you as you to the potential. You can achieve, wallah, whatever you want to achieve. If you do not make good use of this time, and then you wait later, you will not achieve it properly. This is the time that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala place you that potential to make your mark and to write your own history. Don't only want to be successful in this dunya at the expense of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how do I do to achieve that? Allah, in numerous verses of Quran, outline what we need to do. And these are very practical things I am going to mention. Just think about them and see how best you can handle them. Go to school, do your business, enjoy, be successful. But remember, it has to be connected with Allah. And in the famous dua, you all know this dua where different groups of people have been mentioning this to us and what they need. When it comes to the youth, Shabab said, وَعَلَى الشَّبَابِ بِالْإِنَابَةِ وَالتَّوْبَةِ Allah grant our Shabab, our youth, inaba, returning to you, and repentance. Imam al-Bakir alayhi salam reported to Abu Sa'id, Wallah, if you will bring me a youth who is a Shia and is not disciplined in his religion, I will discipline that youth. Now, Quran mentioned, Alladheena amanu wa tatma'innu kulubukum bi dhikrillah. Ala bi dhikrillah tatma'innu al-kulub. Allah said, those who believe, it's fine. But tatma'innu kulubukum bi dhikrillah. They find tranquility through the remembrance of Allah. That's where you have to begin as youth. And the remembrance of Allah can be in different form. But the best form of that is Salah. Salah. Wherever you are, make sure you attend to it. That's the first thing. Tatma'innu kulubuhum bi dhikri Allah. Say, Allah bi dhikri Allah, tatma'innu l-kulub. Because through the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find peace. The heart finds tranquility. Number two, time management. It's a problem today. It is really a challenge. And we are where we are, some of us, because of lack of proper time management. 
What do I mean by this? You see, every single human being has the following needs in his or her life. Social need, intellectual need, spiritual need. If you are a politician, then political need. But you know our problem? And of course, material need. We attend to one at the expense of the rest. Most of us, we attend to our material need or social need at the expense of the spiritual need. And yet Islam comes out and says, look, if you want to attend to all, begin with the spiritual need. And through spiritual need, you're able to filter into the rest. So the first thing that you do as youth, irrespective of the challenges, irrespective of the difficulties, attend to your salah. Allah. Because there is a question that many youth ask me. Myself, I receive a lot of these questions. Sheikh, sometimes you pray, what do you get out of salah? Some said, I don't even understand the salah. I'm just praying, I don't understand. I said, no, Allah, when he asks you to do salah, he knows that that salah responds to your natural need. Salat will help you in your life. It responds to a natural need. Salat is not just because of Qiyamah, I want to go to Jannah. No. Salat responds to our natural needs. And today you go to most of the mosques, you find Salat time, elderly people sitting in the mosque. You don't know, I will pray, I'm tired. I'm busy with my work. I'm busy with my business. I'm busy with my studies. I say it begins there. Naturally, you need peace of mind. Salat provides that easily. Naturally, you need self-expression. Salat provides that easily. Naturally, you need to refresh. Because after work, you get exhausted. You get tired. Many people, when they get tired, you take a nap, which is good. But Quran comforted and said, Inna na shi'at al-layli hiya ashaddu wa ta'an wa akwa muqila. To wake up at night and to observe few moments of ibadah, it gives life to your soul than any other thing that you can think of. So the challenges that you go through in your life, Wallah, the best religious and spiritual solution is salah. And I'm telling you as youth, it's so important if you want to become strong, you want to become powerful, adhere to the calling of your salah. Through salah, you don't just connect with Allah, you are able to handle the pressure. Today, one of the stress that our youth are going through is loneliness, depression, and stress, mental health related issue. Yes, go to the expert. But the religion also provides us with some solution. And one of the best solution is ibadah. Salah, hold on to your ibadah as youth. You should be able to withstand the challenges that we are faced today in this world. Success is not just I have everything of this dunya and with Allah I'm nothing. That is not success. That is why the Holy Prophet of Islam remind us so many times. And this hadith, I quote it everywhere. And I'm definitely sure you know the rewire. Rasulullah is telling us, benefit from five before five come. Number one, shababu kakabla haramik. Your youthness before you become old. Now you are young. You can stand and pray. You don't sit on a chair to pray. Now you are healthy. Allah wants you to be strong now. Shababuka kabla haramik. Then he said, your time before you become busy. Now most of us are youth. Small family, young family. We are not that busy. Give that time to your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sihatuka kabla sakh. Your health before you become sick. Now you are healthy. 
But Salat is weak. Fajr is weak. Don't do the nawafil. Don't do the tahajjud. But the wajibat, attend to them. And then of course, ginaka kabla fakrik. The wealth one you have before you become poor. And then the last one, sulla hayati kabla Your entire life before death comes to you. And last but not least, brothers and sisters, as youth, when you go to every community, youth can be viewed into three groups. Try to belong to one of the group and not the other two. The first one is what? He goes to the mosque, he benefits from the mosques, and he does nothing about it. In other words, in return, he doesn't give anything back. Don't be that one. As a Shia youth, be productive to your community. Be productive to your organization. When you begin to complain, ask yourself, what am I giving back to my community? This is the way of Ahlul Bayt. So the first group of the youth is what? He go, I pray, I attend the Muslims, but I do nothing. That's not good. If you are a youth and you focus only on one part of your life, maybe socially or intellectually, academic, and you don't focus the other, the other side die. And in future, it's going to backfire. The second group, they are those who don't even want to go and benefit from the community and they don't want to do anything about it. Anything they are negative. Don't be that. Be the third one. You go, you benefit, and you look at how you can also help. This religion needs you to represent it wherever you go. And Allah has given you that power. And Allah has given you that energy. If you use it wisely, Wallah, you will see a lot of barakah and blessing in your life. But if you fold your arm and you complain too much, Islam is boring. Islam is this. Say, no, no, Islam is not outdated. Islam is the best way of life. Believe me or not. It's just our understanding of this religion. And you know what? Islam is not boring. It's not boring. You know why we sometimes as youth, I'm not saying you, but I've been to so many communities across the globe. People find it boring. Because they do not understand it. And in conclusion, please, brothers and sisters, you know, the current world that we are living in, the biggest challenge is not lack of information. It's lack of implementation of that information. That is our biggest headache. It's not the ilm, it's ma'rifa. Last night I was discussing that at a mosque here, somewhere here. Our biggest challenge is not information. You have the information here. But be careful. You know how many hours we waste on this? How many hours we waste on social media? We can't spare five minutes to pray but we can spend three hours, four hours on social media by the time we realize it is in the middle of the night. As you plan your life, have a strategic plan, have a program. Draw what you want to achieve in life, not only Duniawi, but Okrawi. If you have a plan, you will achieve it. Even in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the only problem. We waste a lot of time. But when it comes to the calling of Allah, we all have excuses. So as a youth, make good use of your time. If you use social media, use it certain level and certain level. Today even hijab on social media becomes a big problem. That's one challenge also that we face. 
Hence I said, whatever you do, the end result is to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I am able to connect with Allah according to my own capability, then inshallah, I will be successful in all that I do in this dunya. And of course, hereafter becomes much easier. أقول كولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين.